Why people want to travel back when they done came so far? Yes, the journey is going to get rough. Yes, it is. But notice that it tells us here that when they got to Jerusalem, that what the chief fathers did, they uh, offered a freely to the house of Elohim in a set place. Go ahead. Verse, verse 69. Verse 69. They gave after their ability unto the treasure of the work. Three score and one thousand drams of gold and five thousand pounds of silver. Okay, so notice that everyone gave according to their ability. The same thing that Paul asked. You only can give according to your ability, but it's to the work. It's to the work. If you want someone to support what you're doing, you have to support what you're doing yourself. Very important because there's plenty of people that want to support a ministry. But if the ministry is doing something, it's, it's very important, but you have to see that the people had made up their mind months ago to go back. Okay, very important. And so just just even going back to Jerusalem is is, is a is a costly decision up front because that's a long travel. That is a long journey. And I know that we'll read that and just think of the endurance on your body. The same way in this walk here, guys, it can get tiresome. You'll be saying as the kids, are we down yet? Are we down? That's why you cannot get so sidetracked in this journey. This is a long journey. This is not a hundred yard dash. And if you don't understand that what the most high is doing is gathering his people from the nations, you will get weary and get tired and say, let's just go back. Listen, somebody make up a God so we can go back to Egypt. Because that's what they did every time hard time came. So the people that leaving, leaving and going back to a rundown city, they had to count the cost before they even left. And half the people never even saw this city that they're talking about. The same way, same thing that we're dealing with. We never saw it this way. We never walked this way before. Am I right? right. And so we have to hang in there and endure this thing. We're not in here to try to force anybody to do nothing or nothing. We do no magic tricks, none of that. But we must put our hands to the plow and not look back. This is what they are doing too. Go ahead. Verse 70. So the priests and the Levites and some of the people and the singers and the porters and the Nephilim dwelt in the cities and all Israel in their cities. Go ahead. And when the seventh month was come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Very important. So we're looking at the pattern, okay? This is systematic study. You're looking at the pattern. So the people, when they got there, they are one. Okay? So, so that tells me in the midst of their journey, they stayed one. They stay one. So we see a key right here. The key to rebuilding a city, a nation, or a family. You must be one. We've got to be God. One. Paul say, make every effort to keep the unity of the faith. Matter of fact, let's go to that verse and look at it. This is called sound doctrine. Paul said that in the last day that many people ain't going to want to deal with sound doctrine. We have to allow the scripture to speak to us and encourage us so that we can make sure that we are doing, doing the right thing, which is the biblical thing. I said Ephesians, right? Chapter 4. Let's look at verse 3, Mike. Uh -huh. Chapter 4, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of, and Father of all, who is above all. Okay, now notice what Paul is saying. So for us to be one as a congregation, 
Because we can look out there and see our nation is divided. Am I right? right? We have to make effort. Paul was saying to the believers in effort that if we're going to have unity, you have to make effort. Because why? The enemy wants to come in and divide us over doctrine, over the name, over the feast, or any little thing. And if a congregation bite on any little thing like that, it will stir up like crazy. So we have to make the effort to keep the bond, to keep unity and the bond of peace. That might be something that you believe, but we don't apply that here. And that's okay if you want to believe that outside. But here, that we, we stick with this here so that we can keep unity. And we have to be mature enough that we can all believe different things. But if you're with a congregation that follows this line of thought, then that's what you need to do. That's why, if it, if it has nothing to do with salvation, and so we we cannot allow to be become as Rapha babies that want our way. So Paul said we have to make effort. So that means that unity is not going to come easy. Unity is not going to become easy. So we have to be able to fight to keep the unity in the faith. And most people are not willing to do that because it does take effort in that. I would take that, but I don't want to go there. Let's go back. So they came in the, in the seven months. So if they came in the seven months, what month is that? Tishri. Huh? Tishri. Tishri. The seven month. Now, Tishri is the Babylonian month. How many people do that? Yes. So in the Bible, believe it or not, all the biblical months are there. Yeah. Nisan is, uh, is, is Babylon. Is, is the month they picked up while they was in captivity in Babylon. So now the Hebrew, the seven month, the biblical seven month. I'm gonna spell it for you because I don't know. If I'm a, huh? the none. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah, and you can get that from First King chapter eight verse two. We, on the month, we got Tamu. What we have a Tamu on the calendar for? That come from Babylon. Sure huh? Nisan come from Babylon. So, so, so all these things, so all these things are coming out. Been in the book, but when you've been taught from a certain group, then we inherit certain things, but y'all still straighten it out. Thank you, Lord. We still straighten it out. So, in the seven month, we know what's about to take place. It was that one man Go up. Go ahead. Verse 2. Ezra chapter 3, verse 2. Then stood up Joshua, Joshua, the son of Zodok, and the and his brethren, the priest, and the Zerubbabel, the son of Shethiel, and his brethren, and buildeth the altar of God of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon. As it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. And they set the altar upon his basis, and for fear was upon them because of the people of whose of those countries that they offered burnt offerings there, thereon unto the Lord, even burnt offerings morning and evening. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offering by number according to the custom, as the duty of every day required, and afterward offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons right. and of all the set feasts of the Lord that were consecrated, and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord, but the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. They gave money also unto the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zion and to them of Tyre to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea of Joppa, according to the grant that they had of Cyrus, king of Persia. Now notice it's a lot in this text, but I want you to see that Zerubbabel, he, his name means to be sold in Babylon, meaning that he was born in Babylon. Yes, he was. He was born in Babylon. So most of the people that you're going to see coming back from the journey, they was born in the Babylon. 
Guess what? You and I was born in Babylon. So now trying to get us out of Babylon, I'm going to show you where it says that, then we'll come back to Ezra chapter 3. I just want to show it to you. Go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. We'll pick it up in verse, uh, uh, just one, 11 and 12. Matthew 1, 11 and 12. And Josiah begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Okay. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Sethiol, and Sethiol begat Jerubbabel. Yes. So he's born in the Babylon. So he, he understand the system. But notice that though he was born in Babylon, but Babylon wasn't in him. Notice how this, it, there's no coincidence that his father named him sold in Babylon. Meaning to plant, Mike. He, he was sold in Babylon, but he's going to grow up and be a leader. Going to lead his people out of Babylon. I guarantee his father was telling him about that city that they came from before it collapsed. You see? So the more we tell our kids at a young age about the city to come, the new Jerusalem, they're not going to be attracted to this world. They need to know that all them laptops and computers are going to be burned up. Praise the Lord. You see what I'm <laughs> And so we, we <laughs> so notice that uh, he says here back in Ezra chapter uh, uh, 3, where it says that in verse 2, and he says, and he built the altar of Elohim of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. To to offer burnt offering their own. So the place altar, mazak is the word, where you slaughter sacrifices. So notice that the first thing they did was to build the altar. Why would they build the altar first? Somebody talk to me. Why would be the first thing that they built was an altar? Sacrifice. sacrifice. Come on, talk to me. Get your heart right. Get that's right. Get your heart right. Anything else? Uh huh. Uh huh. Abraham always built an altar. Always built the altar. All throughout the scripture, they built the altar. Very important because the altar, as you say, that's where you put your sacrifice. When when Noah came out of the ark, he said the first thing he did, he built the ark into your hobo. They never say this, he built the altar. So they always put the God behind the altar. Very important. So the first thing that we see as I look at this text is that that they had to get the people heart right. You had to, you, yes. Listen, you had to get your heart right. Yeah, Spiritual. Send off and thank you. Yeah. Huh? Turn to the king. Yeah. Yeah. This is what this deal is. It deals with the heart. It's dealing with the heart sacrifice. There's no further than Mazak. Zak is the word. It means sacrifice. And so that's why in Romans chapter 12, it tells us to present our body as a living sacrifice. So in this kingdom building of a revert of a nation, there must be sacrifice. Sacrifice. No matter what you think about this country now, but when they first came on here, it had to be some sacrifice. This country did not get built just by just sitting around. Am I right? It did. There had to be people sacrifice. So this idea that we just sitting around waiting on your show to come back. We just waiting, just waiting and wait. No, he say occupy till I come back. Man, that rapture thing has done a number to the church. I promise you, that rapture thing is straight from hell. Because it makes believers say, why? Why do something when, why build? Why plant? Why do this here? And why the devil kick you and take it over the world? That, was, that is not a biblical teaching. But the church had bought into it. Now believers are lazy, don't want to do nothing. We got a sacrifice. Nothing get done. And I said here, I don't know where I got it from, I made it up, I don't know how. But I said that if we do not sacrifice for this generation, we will be forgotten by this generation. You don't remember people that didn't make no sacrifice? Come on. 
Think about that. To live, so and so live 930 years, and that's it. So and so live this and then. Old age don't mean it's a blessing. People think old age live. Listen, you can you can accomplish your goal at 33 and you out of here. You sure did what he had to do? Gone. See ya. I come back. So old age just means that God is giving you time to get yourself together. Think about that. So we see that they built the altar. Now, I'm going to break out a few things because this is very important. Because from the days of Abraham until the days of the children of Israel, I'm going to show you something how the pattern dropped. Let's go to Genesis. Very important. I, ain't for the, I, I, I thought that jump on this rock, but I ain't jumping with this. Huh? I want to show you something, what happened in the days of the patriarchs. In Genesis chapter 12. Verses 7 and 8. Now, when Abraham got his call to leave where? Babylon. Ur. Right. Say, so ain't no different pattern. Everybody got to leave this city. <laughs> 7 and 8. <laughs> 7 and 8. Now, what I want you to see, I want you to see how that, how that the decline of building the altar declined. Abraham started at as a pattern, every time he got a word from y'all, a vision, boom, build the altar. He was sacrificed. He realized it was going to be a sacrifice. Seven and eight. Genesis chapter seven and eight. Verse seven. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Mm. Let's go to another one. Genesis chapter 13. We'll read verses 3 and 4. And he went on his journey from the south to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai. Ai. Ai. Unto the place of the altar which he made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Notice that. So he's building altars, okay? Let's go to another. Let's look at uh, 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 verse 18. I want you to see that in the days of Abraham, one, two, three, four, five altars he built it. But I want you to see how, to de how it began to decline. See, other words, that, guys, we can make all the sacrifice that we can for this generation, for this congregation. But if we don't pass on the, the, uh, the ability of building the altar, We'll find ourselves in Egypt. Very important. Go ahead. Verse 18. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built it there an altar unto the Lord. Mm. Mm. So again, let's look at the last one here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22. This here is the altar of, of all altar here. This is when he was told to offer up Isaac, Isaac yeah. the son. And then it says, uh, just in verse 9. Verse 9. When they came to the place which God had told, told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Okay, so that's the last mention. So we see Abraham build one, two, three. And what four, five authors, right? Okay, let's go to Abraham's son, which is Isaac, chapter 25. What kind of altars are we building? If we're building an altar, is it until Jehovah sacrificing? They understood as we talked about prayers and incense, dedication, sacrifices. We only have one mention of Isaac, the son, building the altar, but we see the father laid the foundation for him, right? So why is only mentioned one time? Verse 25. Chapter 26, I said, right? 
25. I'm sorry. Uh, chapter 26, verse 25. Chapter 26, verse 25. And he built it an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. Uh huh. And, this there, mm -hmm. and there Isaac served. And their Isaac servants did the well. Mm. So he have a scribe. So he did go to Yah in prayer on this on this water here. So so in Isaac generation, we see that he only built one altar. Let's look at Jacob, who who was able to transfer the blessing over uh, to him, or Isaac was. Let's look at Genesis chapter thirty three. Let's see how many altars that Jacob ended up building. Genesis chapter thirty three. And let's look at verse 20. And he erected there an altar and called it El Eho Israel. The God of Israel. Okay, that's one altar. Let's look at another one. Let's look at chapter 35. Got it. Verse one. Okay. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Mm, okay, so there's two. Am I right? Okay. Look at uh verse three. And let us arise and go to Bethel. And I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. And he built it there an altar and called the place El Bethel because there God appeared unto him and he fled from the face of his brother. Mm. So we see that altar that Abraham built altars, five. Isaac built one. Then we see that Jacob, one, two, three, four. Guess how many times the children of Israel built one? None. There's no mention of them. There's no mention of the children. No altars were built in, 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 in the fourth generation that went down to eat. No altar. So I wonder who they were building altars to then. There's no mention, or is it? Well, let's go to the book of, of Ezekiel and see. So now the fourth generation was in Egypt. So let's see, is there any, because we have no document that they built any altars, but or do we? Ezekiel said, right? Mm -hmm. Chapter 20. Let's see something. Ezekiel chapter 20. Let me get there. Let's see what they was doing down in Egypt then, just for the sake of time. Uh, let's pick it up in uh because boy, you can read the whole thing, start at verse one, but we're not. Let's look at how God deal with them. Now the fourth generation was in Egypt, but we have no mention of them building any altars. So let's see what they were doing in, in Egypt while they weren't building no altar. Verse 7. Uh, chapter 20, start at verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 7. Then said I unto them. Cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Mm, go ahead. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their, of their eyes. Neither did, did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against mm. them in the midst of of the land of Egypt. Mm, notice, notice in the land of Egypt. So Ezekiel saying this is what they was doing. They was building altars to the gods in Egypt. This is what guys come getting on them. This is what they was doing in Egypt. Now we know they were doing that while Joseph was alive. But when the leadership died, they start being perverted. Yes, sir. You can see this in the book of Judges over and over and over. When and the, uh, the theme of the book of Judges, because there was no king or leader in Israel, the people did what was right in their own eyes. They served other gods. 
So we see that Yah gives us a testimony what the church in the fourth generation was doing. Was building these idols in Egypt. In America, what was we doing? Okay? Why was we, why was we celebrating Christmas, Easter, and Halloween? Because our family, I guarantee you, when the first generation came on here, they weren't doing that. They weren't doing that. But as you stay in the land long enough, you take up the abomination of the land. So now, you would notice, you would notice the journey with Israel coming back. It's, it's going to be rough. We've been in captivity for 70 years. So the first thing, and, and I heard y'all say, the first thing you have to do is, is get your heart right. We got to get our heart right. But when you're building an altar to, you can't say you're building an altar to Jehovah with that Christmas tree. You cannot with the Easter bunny. You, you cannot. You cannot. So I can hear the voice of uh, uh, Joshua and Elijah saying, listen, how long will you waver between two opinions? I mean, we hear, we love to quote Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve. And so the altar determined our heart. The gift, Yeshua says it like this here, the gift doesn't sanctify the altar, the altar sanctify the gift. So if you want to be sanctified in God, you get on the altar. We got to get on his altar. And so now we got to break up all, all the junk inside our life that has been built by our parents. And so the better that we do it, Mike, y'all, the better that we build the altars, we build them not only for us, but our children. So you can't build an altar here in the front of us, but then you got a private altar at the house. And the kids see it. They know it. You can't fool the kids. You build an altar over here, and you build an altar over there. You make a sacrifice to Baal, and yeah, it, it can't be. It. He's not taking that. He's not taking that. And that's the thing that we have to guard against ourselves. We got the season coming up. That's their altar. That's their sacrifice. If, if, if they want to go out there and spend all their money on Christmas, that's them. That's their altar. And guess how much they altar? Listen, they have done a study how much people are going to sacrifice this year. $500 per family. Now, that's just us. The small family. <laughs> but you understand, though, the... The world is getting ready to show you what they think about this system. They're willing to sacrifice everything and go in debt. Yeah, that's crazy. But yet the kingdom suffer because of that. The kingdom suffer because of that. And I tell people, listen, all Walmart want too is your money. That's right. All they want. Get a basket and fill it up. And say, and then at the person at the door, you just rolling out. All y'all want is our money. <laughs> Try to get out the door with that basket. <laughs> Try to get out the door with that basket. <laughs> and see what happened. The enemy has perverted that so that, that the work of Yah would not go forth. But they building their mosques. <clears throat> they building them temples, ain't they? The more pagan temples, ain't they? Uh -huh. How they building those things? Go to Santa Fe, it's one on that, and right, big one. Big. Go to Alvin, big one. Friends with a big one. I'm like, what the, I almost had a wreck when I saw that thing. They building them. Uh -huh. But the church of Yeshua HaMashiach, they say, oh, I don't get them. Nah. Isn't that amazing how people give to, to idols? To false gods? But not the living God? The devil is a liar. Let's go back. Man, he's been good with us on the clock. I want to bring out a few more things here, but I want I want you to see that he built an altar. Watch this here. I will full time let him I'll verify this here right quick. He said here that he built the altar, right? In verse 2, at the bottom of 2, which would be a section B. He built the altar. Ola, sacrifice, that on as it is written. Notice it, Mike, as it's written in the law of Moses. What you will find out, guys, in, in, in this kingdom restoration, 
restoration, they always did it according to Moses. And what is no attack of the enemy on us today? Don't do it according to Moses. I'm going to show you a, a, a few verses how they use. Go to Ezra chapter 6. Ezra chapter 6. It's when they had, had finally dedicated the temple, built it, and finished it. And it says here at verse uh, 15, Mike, for the sake of time, verse 15, we'll read verse 15 through 18. And this house was finished on the third day of the month, Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. Uh -huh. And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity, kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. And offered at the dedication of this house of God and a hundred bullocks, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and for a sin offering for all Israel, twelve he goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. And they sent the priests in their divisions, and the Levites in their courses, and the service for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. Notice as the book of Moses. I keep telling y'all that's the pattern. We don't have to go to, listen, we don't have to go to seminaries to try to find out what God wants us to do. It's in the book. It's in the book. You can go to him because all, all, all you're going to do is end up buying his book to tell you what God wants you to do in his book. Another, Mike, let's go to uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8. Because remember, as, as you're studying these here, you need to use Ezra and Nehemiah because in the Septuagint, that there, there are one books. Only in the Greek, in the Latin, they separate the book. I mean, in the Latin. Uh, verses uh, 13, Mike. Right? Eight, eight, Numbers chapter 8, verse 13. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 13. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the word of the law. And they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast nah, nah, of the nah. seventh month. See that? Did we just find it? I mean, we just not found it, but it's in the book. So the pattern that I want you to see that our success is not in a seminary. The success is in the book. He watches over his word to confirm it. He's just looking for some leaders that's going to open up the book and read the book and obey the book. Hallelujah. Last one. Uh, chapter, uh, same book, chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse 1. On that day, they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. We don't have to read no more. See, see how did they find that out? In the book. So our success, because this what I'm trying I'm, to I'm, 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 Listen, I want to know where we at in prophecy. I don't want to be trying to do ministry. I want to be on his time. So if this is kingdom restoration, then it... There must be a pattern. So the first thing that we see they did, they built the altar. If we, if we want to see the first thing they did, they obeyed the king. So now we have to obey our earthly king or our heavenly king. They, they was responded to King Cyrus' voice. He did not make them go, did he? Nope. Yeshua ain't going to make us serve him. Right. But he provided everything for them. King Cyrus did, didn't he? So he's going to provide everything for us. It's the pattern. Don't you see it? Yeshua said, if you do ministry, I'll provide everything for you. Now, if you want to do your own thing, you can stay in the Babylon. No, the sorrow can make them go. So we don't make our sisters and brothers come out of Babylon. They have to obey the king. Amen. They have to obey the king. So our king is Yeshua. It's a pattern now. And then when we get, we have to understand the long journey. This is a journey. You're going to get weary in your journey. But then when we get there, we've been led by Zerubbabel, okay, which is a priest. Because the priest is the one that's supposed to handle the word. Then the first thing we do, we build the altar. That's the same thing that Noah did. When he came out the ark, he built an altar 
unto Jehovah. This ministry has been built into Jehovah. So yeah. how do I know if we're not building according to Jehovah if it's not written in the word? Just that simple. If we build anything that's not according to his word, it's not according to him. That's not a perfect sacrifice. That's not a good sacrifice. That's the safe God. Don't you understand? Yes, sir. If we if we really want to sacrifice a, a live animal on him, which we're not going to do that, I'm just using an example. Don't we have what we're supposed to bring? We don't have to guess if a pig's supposed to be on the altar. If we want to build a rip, a tabernacle, we have the pattern in the book. We just have to learn how to read it. So it's no guessing. It's no guessing. So we see that they sacrificed to build an altar unto Jehovah. And then it says, verse 3, and they set it upon a, a base, or which is a foundation. Watch it, so it has to be, this thing has to be set. Meaning that we're not moving, moving our altar away and put one up that you like. See, oh yeah, people got private altars. See, that ain't the way I was sacrificed, Pastor Sherman. Oh yeah, people got private altars. And they try to bring them and set it alongside this one. Gotta be careful, people. Everybody not sacrificing sacrifice to Jehovah the way that you're doing it, just because they said the name. You have to be able to recognize that. You must be able to recognize that. Because the enemy, th listen, thank you. The same way, and they, they're they finding out that they put certain symbols on the box for culture. It's a K or C or the certain symbols. But do you know the enemy is slick? They'll just put symbols on there and you would think it is, and it's not. They'll make it complicated that, that it, it used to be simple to read what was in there, but now you need a dictionary. <laughs> Why are they making it so complicated? Yeah. And y'all know a fact. If I can't pronounce a word, I shouldn't eat it, huh? But it looks so good. Think about that. I can't even, what kind of, <laughs> you know it looks like a scientist word, don't it? Oh my gosh. It ain't used to be that complicated. <laughs> On a piece of salt, I'm trying to read the salt. Is it pork? And I'm like, what's all this other stuff? How do you pronounce this, man? <laughs> Ministry is not complicated. It's in the book. And just as Paul, them in the Acts chapter 15, Paul the Romans and the, uh, uh, with the Acts chapter 15, that when they had an issue, they didn't divide over it. Should, should the Gentile be sacrificed? No, they came together. And I promise you, it's open. If, if anybody have any issue that is a major issue, we ought to be able to come together as a congregation and discuss it. If, if it bothers you that bad, if it bothers you that bad, now I can't help my vocabulary, so it don't, don't even come with that, okay? I can't help that. <laughs> I can't stop that one. But I'm saying that we have to be mature enough to come. And then I find out they like, because I said the name like this, or because we really? One time a person didn't want to do the feast with us because we have to because we decided to do the feast at the building over there because it was more room. Well, we couldn't get it on the exact date because the city shut down on, 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 on Easter weekend, right? So they told us that we either do it right here or do it on this day, but you can't do it on that day. So what are we gonna do, guys? So we got it. Well, because we didn't have it on the day, the person didn't want to come. But you came back next week. So you either with us or you're not. And guess what? They're not with us now. Mm. So if, if that is an issue, I think like, y'all know how many times that we celebrate Christmas and it wasn't on Christmas Day? Come on. If your work company throw that birth, that Christmas party on the 19th, you there, ain't you? Yeah. Yeah. Why are we all of a sudden that? <laughs> oh, no, back in the day. Back in the day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> but y'all understand what I'm talking about, right? So what, so what, why you want to get all back to you be trying to fool? Are you making every effort to keep unity? Yes, that's it. Are you making effort? Come on, that's it. 
Then they want me to stop saying Jehovah and Yahweh. Just only say the most high. And because I wouldn't stop doing it, I didn't care if people prayed. If I asked you to pray and all you know was Jesus, use Jesus. Don't try to use nothing else because you're going to butch it up. I don't care because why? We're all growing. Yes, sir. But that person wasn't mature enough and want us to stop saying Jehovah or Yahweh. Just say the most high. That's just like coming to your house and say, listen, I'm tired of watching the Cowboys. Can you turn it on something else? No, but I can open this door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's foolishness. It's foolishness. People that's not, listen, guys, people that's not settled in their walk, don't listen to them. People that's not committed to nowhere, don't listen to them. You know your family don't go to church. You know they're not serious about God. Don't listen to them. They're not sacrificing nothing, okay? Don't listen to them. And the lighting of the menorah, remember that? Oh, yeah, the lighting. Thank you, see, Roy Messi back there, ain't you? <laughs> Thank you, Roy. Tell me the story. <laughs> we used to do the menorah. Light the candle. But that, can't, that thing ain't going nowhere. That thing is like six foot in the ground. We had it made. Made, dude. Had the star of David. This is what we thought of the star of David. See, we learn. Listen, once you start, learning, listen, we we always learn. Amen. Get that flag down. <laughs> Put the turn that music on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put the pressure on. I mean, we learn it. Now, that might be good for somebody else, but we ain't knocking none of that. I'm saying now, nah, for conscience' sake. Yes, sir. Once we read, what was it? Once we read it for ourselves in the Book of Maccabees, we're trying to like, where's that all there? I mean, uh, uh. uh what it says Manoah at? It said, and they dedicated the altar for eight days. I'm telling you, it shows up. Like, oh, they got us again. And so, guess what we did? We built an altar. And we took off the eight, ain't, ain't no biblical, okay? Ain't no eight stem Manoah. It doesn't exist. Only in Judaism. Because you know how much money that they can make off all? A lot. And they sell them a note. Listen, we had, bro, I tell you, we had a Hanukkah place around here like crazy. Hanukkah this, Hanukkah this, this. I had to throw all that stuff in the trash. Like your Christmas lights. Right. All that stuff, yeah. And yeah, they was fighting me. They was fighting me. There was a lot of tradition in Messianic too. And they began to learn things. Then you show them the truth. They say, well, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, but this thing is set. This is set. We're not switching out altars based on any generation. This is, we already know what to offer here. Very important. A few more, and then I'm going to shut down because they don't uh, open up the kitchen, throwing the fan out, and I can smell the food like that. Y'all know how they do it. You know what I'm saying? I saw my wife. You know, you know how they do it. All right, man. <laughs> Thank you. I ain't crazy. I'm like, hey, Pastor Jay, the smell getting deeper and deeper. <laughs> and they kept the, it says, and they kept the Feast of Tabernacle. Ain't that something, though? They kept the Feast of Tabernacle. Amen. When they got back to the land, can you imagine? They kept the Feast of Tabernacle. I can take you to the revelation. It says that in the end, that we shall keep the Feast of Tabernacle. Amen. We just got to get the altar right. That's all we got to do. We just got to get the altar right. Ooh. I'm going to die because if I go here, what's that, 10 minutes? 2.30, guys. Just give me 2.30. Now, notice this here. Because Miss Bernice, she's going to be doing this from here. It says in verse 5, and after that, they continue to burn offering both of the new moon. She's going to be our moon watcher. Oh, okay. December the 8th. Okay. December the 8th. Okay. We're going to blow the trumpet. Okay. He said blow the trumpet at the new moon. These are for signs and season. Now, if we brought, if we're going to take anything back from the devil, we got to take back the sun and the moon. <laughs> the horoscope, them dead as a number. They perverted our stuff. The whole time I got saved, I used to run from that stuff. I ain't reading that. I didn't both read, but I didn't know that it really was for us. But the enemy hijacked it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh, so what's your sign? 
oh, I'm a Gemini. Then I started using my Gemini as a twin for my bad behavior. Y'all know I got split personality. <laughs> yeah. People started using their horoscope, uh -uh, whatever that is, for their behavior. I'm a Leo. The lie, the lover. <laughs> it's crazy how we got hijacked on that stuff, huh? But it's for the feast. It's for feast. See how the enemy has perverted it? We have to take that back. We don't be like that pastor said, did a big old article in the newspaper talking about we taking Halloween back from the devil. Had the biggest Halloween I've been texting all my life. Had the biggest Halloween party I've ever seen in my life in this city. Helicopter come down. I mean, it was like Mardi Gras. I, ne I, pro I never seen nothing like this here. And Roy going to bring me the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> I went down there. I say, and they saw me talking. Some, I don't know how they saw me. And so they say, what you want? I say, I'm looking for Bible gas. Now, I don't know why I went down there. It was just me. <laughs> went down there. I think it was me and Dunn, right? Me and Dunn? Yeah, yeah. Man, well, I was hot, dude. Because he said he's he going to take it back from the devil. And I'm talking about, I ain't never seen people. That city, that night, the whole city seemed like it had been taken over by demons. And today, that man is completely out of ministry. God shut the whole thing down. Shed not only him down, the church down too, and exposed all his stuff. And I pray that if he if he's still alive, that he repent. That's the kind of stuff that we are. This city here is, I'm telling y'all what y'all don't know. This city here has an evil spirit over. I know you say, oh no, I'm talking about our school was called Blocker the Demons. The school I went to was called Levi Fry the Dragons. You want to tell me somebody made up those names? And when a pastor came here and did a conference one time, and so he left, and so I used to visit his church in Houston. He said, Pastor Sherman, you got a hard job down there. He said, I, I said, what you mean? He said, man, it's something about that city. He said, I felt it. I said, you ain't lying. It is. Somebody named it. And then I can bring Minister Jeff in here. He'll say, now he didn't know because he used to go to a blocker. He said that when he moved away and came back, it's amazing how when you move away and come back. He say, I went to the basketball game at Blocker, and they had the demon up on the wall, right? A demon. And so the people get up and he say he hit him, and everybody starts saying it to the demon. Blue devils. I mean, fry, I'm, I'm, this, I'm telling you, I'm not making this up. This is what we're dealing with in this city. You go down there, put your pack taxes on that building. They get Hiram on the wall. See that? Outside the building. I was shot. I, I took a picture of our camera. See that? Okay, it's, you got to. Mm -hmm. Ask why. I'm trying to tell you why, why things can't come together here because it's a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual battle. So you know he don't want this place to be here. So I know everybody come here, uh-uh, they don't stay here. That's why we got to continue to pray that they be exposed when they come here. Because yes, we are up with some things here. And we're going to see this in the book of, of, of Eritrea when we get to chapter 4. You're going to see, and I'm going to ask this question, then we're going to close here. Read this verse here, but we're not going to touch on it. We'll touch on it next uh, uh, Shabbat if, if the Most High said, okay? Look at what verse, uh, 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 chapter 4, verse 1 says. Where are we in Ezra? Ezra, yeah, Ezra. Sorry, Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. And then I'm going to ask the question. Verse 1. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel... Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God, as ye, as ye do. And we do sacrifices unto him since the days of Esfarhada, <laughs> king of Ashur, which brought us up hither. Now, you're going to see that he's going to say, No, 
You can't build with us. Why he told them that? Now, now you you know that they need some help, right? But why he wouldn't let them help him? Why he wouldn't let them help him? See, when we go back over that, okay, I ain't gonna, you ain't got to answer now, but we're going to look at that. Everybody that volunteered to help us in this ministry has to be checked out. I'm going to show you why, if, if you don't know, I'm going to show you why that he said, no, nah, you can't help us. The adversary, why? Because I'm going to show you when the king had took them out of the land, he put other people in the land. So they grew up thinking they're the people, but they're not the people. And the only way that they found out they weren't the people when the real people showed up. Are y'all getting up? Listen, Brother Jay, they about to find out the real people coming. Huh? I'm bringing y'all a conviction. And so guess what the enemy is going to do? Because they can't have it no more, they're going to destroy it. We better wake up. Y'all didn't, he didn't tell, he didn't put this in here. Who put them in the land? And they've been in the land for so long, people think they are the people. Are you hearing me? The same thing happened here. The king, the king of Syria and Babylon put them in, in the land and took out the real people, put them in captivity. I can show you that. And put fake people in the land. Now, they've been there for so long. When people come there, they think they're the land. And then I'm going to show you how that, that when the people got in the land that the king put in there, different groups of the people, and then the God of the land, the God of Israel, sent lines to each the people. And so the people said, hold up, king. The, the, the God of this land, we tried to sacrifice to him, but it wasn't right. And he sent lions to attack us. Then the king said, well, go get one from Judah and bring it back to the land. And so he can teach y'all. Oh. And so they taught the people. How do you think they learned that stuff over there? Right. They taught the people. And the Bible, we'll see this next week. And so the Bible said, and the people sacrificed to Jehovah and to their power. We got to know how to stay. And only the word of God is going to reveal those things and show us. It's the same pattern, nothing new. And so what errors in them, I mean, that's why I've been eating is because we have to understand that is an adversary. But we're going to see you're going to also see why, uh, who was that was attacking uh, Nehemiah? Sam Ta uh, Ballad, Sam Ballad and, and Tabat. You know why? Because it says here that if you if, if you read the genealogy, is that, that his name comes up, Tabat come, comes up. And because they couldn't find his name the in the registration, oh, right. he couldn't eat the holy thing. Right. And so he stayed in the land. Remember, he know the language. He know how to talk. And so now his is 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 it's the same picture like the scribe and the Pharisees didn't like each other. But when it came time to bring down Yeshua, they got together. Yeah, yeah, right. So here's the enemy. Oh, I can't join y'all, but I'm gonna join the enemy then. You gotta notice, ain't no new pattern. Right. It's showing us his name couldn't he couldn't eat, eat up the holy thing. Well, you ain't gonna eat it now. You ain't gonna eat it too. It's the same pattern. So that's why that I don't care what's going on. I promise I thank Yah the Most High for having the steadfastness. You know, I thank y'all for being here. It went too well. It was just a few of us, but I was still preaching like it was a thousand people. Right, this boy wasn't. It didn't matter to me. That's why that he didn't call me as a congregation or as a group. He called me to do what I'm called to do, and that's it. When I check out, I, mean, I did, I did my best. He didn't call me to box you. He ain't call me to fight with you. He say, preach the word. Am I right? So you ain't the word, but I told my wife, you better be glad I'm nasty. That's not people from coming here. <laughs> That's not people from taking over. That man, you can't go down and take that. Who you taking that? Huh? People understand that if they know, like, man, that dude, he's not Jesus. I mean, I'm like Steve Hawkins. I'm gonna always say now. <laughs> But you need those kind of leaders because if if, if you have a weak leader uh, like Aaron, Aaron was no leader, right? right. Man, Aaron was no leader. Because why? A leader that's controlled by the people will get us in trouble. In trouble. So y'all in good hands. And I do mean good hands. I got my friends too, huh? We'll pray for them later. 
Now he can either walk out or be carried out. It doesn't make no difference. Right? Right. Yeah. 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 Because I I I I I know what the master said, but this ain't the day of turning the other cheek. <laughs> we'll deal with that later. Amen. Master, I heard you say, but this was the cause for that one. The cause for this day. What you got, son? I was waiting on y'all. What you got, Jason? Uh, it just came out of nowhere. Um, when you said uh. Uh, you're in good hands. It reminded me of a commercial, I think, Allstate. Yeah. yeah. And I said, are you in good hands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are in good hands. We need to take the heart, the scripture that said, if y'all be for us. Right. We got we to gotta walk these things out. These bumper stickers that feel good. No, this is real. And we're going to see that when Haggai comes on the scene, am I right? And Bernie, when Haggai said, listen, be encouraged. Build this temple. It said that they was encouraged by Haggai and Zechariah prophecy. Wasn't it? Amen. Encourage them. Amen. So as we're building, give us some encouragement. We need encouragement. But we ain't moving. We ain't going back to Christianity. We ain't going back no. nowhere. No. We ain't going back. No. No. They had to cross over. We did already cross over Jordan. Yeah, right. yeah. Go back to what? Yeah. Uh-huh. What you got for me? You hear what she said? No. She said we gotta go back to the land where we belong. Oh! Right. Hey, hey, didn't the Bible say a child shall lead us? A child shall lead us. Amen. That bleed y'all. Hallelujah. Don't have our children to rebuke us like, what, what you mean that y'all don't believe y'all? Because they will. 